Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, TV, film, sports, wrestling, everything really. We talk about it all. As always, you know me as Peter Miliotis, and on Twitter, you know me as PD Beats. And uh, my guest is a professional wrestler currently wrestling with ROH, Ring of Honor Wrestling. We are with Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Hello, PD. Thank you for having me. No problem. I mean, right off the gate, I'm sure people want to know. Maybe people that are part of the whole wrestling <laughs> Twitter first, they probably know. But Cheeseburger, what did that name come to be? So... The that's always the question people ask me, even like whether it's like interviews or it's just people meeting me, meeting me for the first time. That's always the, que- the question that pops up. So the name Cheeseburger came from a, a friend of mine at training. Uh, when I first started training at the ROH school, like uh, guys would say, because I was so skinny, I need to eat a cheeseburger. So whenever we would travel at every rest stop, I would have to when we stop uh, if if they were available, I have to eat a cheeseburger, and that was kind of how the the name started and took off so then uh everyone just called me cheeseburger like training and uh at the wrestlers backstage like when i was first coming around helping out at shows they called me cheeseburger so nobody really knew my real name for like years and years uh and then i did a segment before i made my official debut i did a segment with charlie haas in the ring where he i was like a ringside guy and he was gonna yell at me on the mic and beat me up or whatever to get some heat so on the in the promo, he asked me what my name is, and then he goes, "You know, what? I'm going to call you Cheeseburger, like in the in the on the mic in front of the crowd." <laughs> and this was, uh, I believe, 2013 in January 2013 in Baltimore, and the entire crowd just started chanting Cheeseburger. And like after he said that, like 600 people in the Burns Arena in Baltimore started chanting Cheeseburger. So then after wow. that. After that, uh, I got to the back, and my my boss was like, "Oh, I think uh, we may have to run this cheeseburger thing." I mean, and it took off. It's like your brand. It's your persona now, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like yeah, it's like uh, it's known. I would like, I would say it's known like worldwide. Like, there's a wrestler named Cheeseburger. Not so much of my wrestling ability, but I think just like the name by itself of this is like a a wrestler named this. That story has gotten out like for what feels like a bunch of different corners of the globe, even for people that haven't seen me wrestle. No, absolutely. We're going to talk about it specifically in terms of the industry. Cause it's an amazing time for pro wrestling right now. We talked about it before, but I want to know when it kind of started for you in terms of when your interest peaked for pro wrestling, what were some matches or wrestlers that drew you towards um, wrestling, man? I want to know about that. So for me, it wasn't, when I was younger, it wasn't some a particular match, but uh, when I was younger, I started watching wrestling with my dad. Uh, whenever I would go visit my dad, when I was younger, uh, in like the late '90s, early 2000s, we would, uh, we would watch like usually watch SmackDown or something like that. And uh, you know, I was a big fan as a kid of all the the greats like The Rock and Austin and Jericho and people like that. I didn't really appreciate guys like say like Eddie, uh, like. Till I was like older and I could really under, like kind of understand the concept of what a good match was. But just as a kid, I just like you know just the cool loud mouth people that uh, that were on top. And uh, we I I would always watch with my dad growing up. And then when I got into uh, middle school and high school, I kind of fell out of wrestling a little bit. I think a lot of fans have that period where wrestling's kind of like not as cool to them anymore, so they kind of like fall out of love with it. But then. The true fans usually at some point they maybe just, they they fall back in it uh, like later in life. So, and my junior a year of high school that was when I really started to get back into wrestling. So from like I would say oh five to like oh nine two thousand ten I didn't watch any wrestling at all. So I missed a ton of stuff. Like I missed like the entire ECW rebrand, like the wow. rise of CM Punk. Uh, I got Kofi missed, uh, Kingston uh, came from that yeah. ECW as well. Yeah, yeah, I missed, the, missed that run with uh, Kofi. I it's like, uh, when, I, when I came back to wrestling, I watched the last Raw of 2009, and it was the Raw where that was, that was leading up to Sheamus versus Cena at TLC. So they, the final image I saw was like, 
uh, Sheamus holding the belt. Oh, it's when he put Cena through the table and held the belt over him and stuff for the pay per view. And then he won the pay per uh, he won the pay per view that weekend, and then started that ran his first reign as champion after that. So that was when I started getting back into wrestling um, after that episode of Raw, and I just started watching every single week. Like, and then I just remembered my love of wrestling and how much I enjoyed it as a kid, and I just kept I just kept watching it from then on, like every every single chance I could get. And then that was when I really started to branch out into more independent wrestling. I started watching some stuff in Japan, British wrestling. I just couldn't get I couldn't once I got older and started watching wrestling again, I couldn't get enough of it. So I just every single day with my my life was just consumed with trying to watch as much wrestling as I as I could find. You mentioned Japan recently. This is a re, a briefly this is a place where, you know, you you have wrestled there. Mm -hmm. And is it safe to say that Japan is the hidden gem of professional wrestling, or are we way past that where, like, people know it's, like, the mecca of pro wrestling? Because it's unbelievable, the scene down there. Oh, I would say we're way past the hidden gem of uh, status of Japan. Just, like, I feel like it's very consistent that New Japan's, like, arguably the top company in terms of uh, in-ring product and in, in wrestling. Like, I... I think you'd be willing to find like a good amount of fans that would agree with that. That New Japan's like the top of like in ring, and plus, um, even like people that didn't really know about Japanese wrestling, like now New Japan's doing shows in the states. You know, because it's like they just the, the first day of the G1 Climax in Dallas, uh, so like they're gaining worldwide exposure because they now they do shows in Australia and Europe and America, not just in Japan. So it's not this like all right, this hard to find thing that's all overseas that's never going to come to my my town in the states like people can go it's now a, a thing people can come and go see and everyone is exposed to all these great wrestlers like tanahashi okada naito uh, liger etc like so many people get to see these guys now so i would say japan isn't it's people know like japanese wrestling is absolutely incredible now absolutely there is a big wave in pro wrestling right now and one of the reasons why there's a wave i mean it's the elephant in the room but everyone's talking about it is there's a new wrestling organization known as aew all elite wrestling that is putting on amazing shows high budget shows and are getting a tv deal and people are saying it's kind of kind of reminiscent of like the like the monday night wars type thing between WWE and AEW, which I find very interesting. My question to you is you're with Ring of Honor and there are other wrestling organizations like Impact Wrestling, New Japan. My question is, are is it too early to tell or what do you think is going to be the outcome for Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling because of AEW? Is it going to be good maybe because there's going to be an opportunity for that there's just more wrestling out there and it'll give other opportunities for guys who are not with AEW to go to ring of honor like how do you feel like it's going to impact everything cheeseburger i feel like it's going to impact all wrestling like positively as a whole because yeah. the the more popular wrestling is overall it doesn't matter which company just the it helps other companies with wrestling as a as a worldwide global thing when it's more popular like you'll if you like pe uh, maybe some people know this maybe some people don't but the the best usually the best boom periods in wrestling are times where WWE is doing really well because it all trickles down you know like ah. when, when more people have a interest in wrestling it causes them to want to consume more wrestling so they start looking out for different companies and different wrestlers and start buying like oh like like for instance like I think the first time I had seen uh, Daniel Bryan was when I had got back into wrestling and the original NXT was just starting and he was one of the eight rookies on NXT. I was like, oh, let me, who's this? Let me look up this Daniel Bryan guy. So I looked him up. I saw Ring of Honor. I had heard about Ring of Honor kind of a little bit just in passing like years ago, but I, didn't, I never really like, followed it. So seeing him on NXT, I looked up Ring of Honor and I looked up his Ring of Honor. So I thought, oh, this is cool. Let me watch more Ring of Honor. So it all, like I said, it all trickles down. Like when, when wrestling as a whole is popular, it just, it affects everything. You know, like if wrestling was a stock market, if WWE's doing well, everything's doing well. You know? And when did the opportunity for you to become part of Ring of Honor come to be? Was that kind of something in the works for a long time or did it just happen? How did that happen? Well, technically I've been a part of Ring of Honor since 
I first start training because I, I originally started at the ROH, the, at the time it was the Ring of Honor Training Academy, then eventually became the ROH Dojo. But I started 2010 uh, from scratch at the ROH Training School with uh, uh, under Delirious and Davey Hayes. And so right off the bat from from start my my start training, I was going to Ring of Honor shows and helping out with uh like whatever need like helping out the ring, helping out production, different doing different jobs backstage before I even had my first match with like Ring of Honor or the Indies. So like I've been a part of the company like since my first day of, of training and then eventually I had my first match on the Indies and then I I had my first match in the Indies maybe like 2012 like early 2012 and then it took me about another like year to be ready for my ROH uh my first ROH match. No, absolutely. You're not the first ROH uh, member to be on the show. Matt Taven has been on the show. We have had Beer City Bruiser. We had, well, we, we, we you know, we had Scorpio Sky when he was on Ring of Honor um, at the time. Uh, you know, uh, TK O'Ryan, Vinny Marseglia. Um, and a lot of them talked about how um, Ring of Honor in the last kind of like three years, like the popularity of it has just kind of skyrocketed year after year. And one cool thing that I want to talk to you about is how I believe you might be able to tell me where this is, but I believe there's one time where NXT and Ring of Honor were in the same city in the same weekend, and Ring of Honor outdrew NXT. Uh, I'm trying to think who that might have been. Texas, I think Dallas or something. I, I, I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been Texas. That would, yeah, would have been a Texas weekend. They did a Texas loop. Like, uh, they're one of their Texas shows, like, right, right down the street from us. Yeah, absolutely. So my question to you is, what's what, uh, what of the Ring of Honor product do you think is driving people towards it? What is kind of the secret sauce, so to speak, of Ring of Honor wrestling that's giving it the popularity it's getting thus far? Um, I think just always, like, Ring of Honor has always tried to present itself as not so much competition to anyone, but more so an alternative. Like we we've tried to always differentiate differentiate ourselves from the WWE or like the Impact and whatnot, uh, and we've always tried to make sure, present ourselves as the alternate brand for maybe like a little bit older of a crowd, a little bit uh, fans to come from maybe something a little bit edgier, something a little bit more fast paced, a little bit more hard hitting. You know, we've always tried to have that different style that caters to a different audience, so we're not trying to fight for the same people. I mean, there's only so many people that can watch a certain thing, you know? So, like, we're not trying to fight for the same audience. We're trying to cater to a different audience so that way we can draw. We're not having to fight for the same fans for for our wrestling show. We're trying to fight for a different level of fans. Absolutely. Do you kind of... Um, are there kind of some wrestlers that you've kind of watched grow in ring of honor that you're kind of really proud of in terms of what they're kind of doing these couple of years because the best part about wrestling in my opinion cheeseburger is seeing certain wrestlers grow and get out of their comfort zones and do amazing things and surprise fans all the time is there anyone that comes to mind when it comes to that oh definitely a bunch of a bunch of people uh like like you said earlier matt taven matt taven's one like i've known matt taven since uh he like his like first time like really coming into the company as like a regular role and just to see him progress from like a guy that won the top prospect tournament and built up tv champ the tag champ to see him eventually win the the big one win the world title it's been absolutely like it's been a really cool it's been really cool to see him on this journey of like just going from like a undercard dude to like a mid-card dude to upper mid-card dude to finally now being the guy and another one is a good friend of mine uh shane taylor seeing him his growth to become a TV champion now. Uh, just kind of same thing. A guy that you know, always came in, worked his worked his ass off, and never really got like kind of credit. And then just you know, over time, just you know, just keep putting in the work, keep putting in the good matches, and then now finally getting the the recognition he deserves as TV champion and getting pay per view matches. And like you know, he just had a match against Bandito on our uh, best in the world pay per view, and that was people were saying that was one of the best matches on. Of the car, and I was like, you know, Shane could really go. I was like, no, if you've been paying attention, like Shane's been having great matches like this, like for the past like year, year and a half. People are just now just starting to realize it, you know. No, absolutely. It's funny because I, I like. Did you watch? Did you watch WCW a little bit or like clips growing up as well? Right, like it wasn't no, just I, I no way. Watched, I actually didn't even know, or I, I didn't know what WCW was until like 
the invasion. Like I didn't even know like WCW or ECW. Like, but but in the, in the last like five years, you've seen clips. You know of. Oh yeah, you, now, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, now I'm older. Yeah. Do you not find that the Kingdom kind of reminds you of kind of some stables that you saw in WCW? Oh yeah, I, I would say so. Yeah, I love I it. That. Like it, it has that like WCW feel to it, man. They, they have that coolness factor of like being like a, a group. You can tell like they're a group of dudes that are like legit friends, and they have that chemistry together. And there's a lot of that in WCW, right? A lot of the mm-hmm. WCW um, did that. Uh, and I agree. Like I had Tyson Dukes on the show, and he talked about how it's a high wave of wrestling, but sometimes it's not going to always be a high wave. It might be a low wave. Yep. What does cheeseburger have to do in terms of successfully riding this high wave of professional wrestling? Well, it's just about trying to stay in front of, uh, in front of trends in wrestling, you know, like there, you, you always kind of have to have your finger on the pulse of wrestling and like figure out what, what works and what doesn't work, what's popular, or what's, what's, uh, falling out of uh what's falling out of popularity and what's kind of like growing in terms of what people want to see mm-hmm. so a lot of wrestling is just kind of paying attention to different trends and things that are going on and you can't you can't always be 100 percent and predict like what way what things fans are going to like and what they're going to consume and want to enjoy but if you can stay smart about it and like um stay ahead of the trends like that's how you really can get yourself success and that's how you you avoid becoming stale and complacent like for instance uh, i was just saying to a friend uh do you follow um, gcw wrestling at all a little bit uh so like gcw i was just saying like they're they're a very smart wrestling company because like they know they ha- they know what their fan base likes and they they always have like they're always doing something different they're always attempting to do something different that other wrestling companies aren't going to do so for instance like they do their their theme shows or like big selling points for them like they do a uh, janela spring break blood sport and they just did that uh backyard wrestling theme show which looked absolutely like insane so like steve stuff like that they're always like got their finger on the pulse like all right what's something different we can do to appeal to, to appeal to uh uh fans and kind of get some buzz going and get uh some popularity for the company and etc cetera, etc cetera. oh absolutely it's uh it's an it's an amazing time for sure, and uh, we'll wrap up. But cheeseburger, we finally did it, man. We've been wanting yeah. to do this for a while, and we did it. Finally, finally, I'm that's man. awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, where can people follow you on social media? Where, well, like, plug away, man. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at cheeseburger che- at cheeseburger R O H for Twitter, and Instagram is at R O H cheeseburger, and uh. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers on Instagram, people, because uh, I need to get that swipe up link for my Instagram story. So. Is that that's it's it's 10,000? Is that the yeah? yeah it's so it's so weird that that's like a thing. Why is that a limitation? Why can't everyone just do that? So my <laughs> you know? it's funny because my like so I have an Instagram account for my dog, and uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, Little Leo the Morky, and he's got 158,000 followers. Nice. So he's always had that swipe up. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never had to like deal with that. But I, I, I saw people. That. I saw people getting that. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I, I tried to do it. I was like, oh, I could promote my t-shirt to so my story. I couldn't do it. I had to look it up. Like, wait, you need ten thousand followers to add a swipe? I'm like, what? Why? I know it's insane, man. Well, thank you so much, man, and I wish you all the best. Seriously, I wish you and Ring of Honor all the best as well. Thank you, thank you, Petey. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Cheeseburger and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.